Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to be with you. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the University of Birmingham. And, of course, the 27th biennial conference of the African Studies Association uh, of the UK. It's wonderful to see so many of you here today. I've bumped into you uh, during the day. I've sent the buzz around uh, the campus at the start of this uh, conference. And it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, colleagues from uh, African uh, universities here to the conference and here to Birmingham. It's wonderful uh, that you are with us. Uh, I understand and regret that some of you had uh, challenges in getting uh, visas. Um, uh, and I'm delighted that they were finally resolved. And I hope that uh, all of you, uh, but our friends from Africa in particular, uh, enjoy your days here on uh, our wonderful campus. This will be the biggest ever AHA UK uh, conference. Um, it is a great campus. You'll see quite a lot of it uh, in the course uh, of the next uh, couple of days. It's the greenest campus uh, in any UK university. It's got more trees than any other campus in any uh, UK uh, university. And, and here we are uh, in the centre uh, of uh, Britain's second city um, in this wonderful green lyrical uh, surrounding. This building was indeed uh, relatively uh, recent. You'll see it's, it's pastiche because the original buildings of the university were completed in 1909, so we completed it. It's, the, it's known as the Algar Concert Hall, because it is a concert hall, um, and Sir Edward Algar, a uh, great um, English uh, composer, uh, was the first professor of music uh, here at the University of Birmingham. He was appointed professor of music in 1905, England's leading composer. He was sacked as a professor 18 months uh, later. Great composer. Um, <laughs> but not all great composers are great uh, professors. But nevertheless, notwithstanding that, we cherish uh, our links uh, with uh, Olga. And of course, we cherish uh, our links with Africa and with African studies. And I want to take a, a few moments to say a little bit more about uh, the university's commitment to and distinction in uh, African studies. It was exactly 55 years ago that the university set up what was then called the Centre for West African Studies under the directorship uh, of the historian uh, John Fage, whose 600-page uh, history of Africa, published in 1978, uh, remains uh, a seminal uh, text. When the centre was originally set up, it was set up to focus on postgraduate study uh, and research. And then it later began to offer one of only two undergraduate uh, studies degrees in African studies in the UK. Uh, the other uh, programme, uh, of course, uh, was not at Oxford, great university, my uh, alma mater, but of course was at SOAS uh, in London. Over those decades since its establishment, the centre grew in reputation and stature. And in 2013, reflecting uh, its expanded research remit, it was renamed the Department of African Studies and Anthropology. The department um, is recognised for its excellence uh, in research. Moreover, in an age where many social sciences have succumbed to the temptation just to do internet-based uh, research, the Department for African Studies and Anthropology remains firmly committed to fieldwork in Africa, and critically and importantly, to collaboration uh, with African colleagues. Despite its modest size, the department has two emeritus professors who are fellows of the British Academy, and the next generation of scholars has already attracted funding from prestigious funders, including the European Research Council, the Economic and Social Research Council, and the Global Challenges Research Fund of UKRI. Over the decades, African Studies has also been one of the university's strongest performers in terms of the research assessment exercise and its successor, the Research uh, Excellence uh, Framework. Its distinction is well and consistently attested. 
equally importantly, the Department's leading role in shaping the Africanist community in the UK has meant that two of its members, Karen Barber and Isa Nolta, have served as presidents of the African Studies Association of the UK. As the ASA UK conference is traditionally held in the institution of its president, and this is the reason why Birmingham is hosting you today. We're very proud of our wonderful academics. We're how proud of the high esteem in which uh, the university, uh, uh, in which uh, African studies at this university is held. And we're proud of the leadership role uh, that our colleagues play in African studies here in the UK. Our ambition is to attract the best and brightest staff and students. Uh, and this has made the University of Birmingham a truly global university. Research focused, of course, but we, in, we encourage research intensive learning. We encourage research enriched study. And we absolutely repudiate the notion that there is some sort of tension between research and teaching. We believe that there is a deep symbiosis, and that is why uh, studying in both as an undergraduate and a postgraduate in a research intensive university is such an exciting and intellectually stretching experience. At the university here at Birmingham, looking across the university, we're proud of our diversity. We are at the centre of Britain's most diverse city, um, and in the university uh, we have students from more than 150 countries studying here at any one time. Uh, a third of our faculty uh, are non-UK. Uh, nationals. And it's that constitution of the university as a global community which so enriches our study here and so enriches our scholarship here. We have a long-standing commitment to Africa. Uh, we have a long-standing tradition of recruiting uh, students from uh, Africa. We've just set up a country office uh, in Lagos um, and our international office uh, specialises in supporting uh, students, um, including with scholarships uh, from African countries, from Angola to Zimbabwe. The success of our alumni uh, in Africa confirms uh, that it is an increasingly interconnected world. International experience further increases the benefits of higher education. We at university are enormously proud to be the alma mater of the Ghanaian physicist Abba Andam, who is currently the only second female oh, is currently only the second female president of the Ghanaian Academy of Arts and Sciences. And more recently, the prize-winning Nigerian author and playwright Selfie Atta uh, was here studying and working with us. Among the university's high-achieving male alumni uh, are Mohammed Yusuf Hajit, the former uh, Minister of Defence of Kenya, and uh, Josiah Adkins uh, Aduari Furon, the current uh, Secretary General of the uh, Anglican Consultative Council. As the UK seeks to recast its position in a rapidly changing global environment post-Brexit, the African can, continent can and should be a focus for students from Britain. Every year, the University of Birmingham offers single honours students across the disciplines a chance to take a module on African history, politics or culture in order to help bring them to understand the interconnected world in which we live, the importance uh, of Africa, Africa as a continent, and the importance and diversity of the cultures that animate that great continent. In addition, our university has set up a successful exchange programme with the University of Cape Coast and that offers students the opportunity to spend a year uh, at an excellent African university. As one of the leading 100 universities in the world, we want our research not only to be world class, but world changing. We're committed to contributing to the UN global goals across the disciplines. 
Birmingham researchers in social sciences, arts and law, but also in engineering life and environmental sciences and in medicine, work closely with colleagues across the African continent to produce practical solutions to some of the greatest challenges facing uh, mankind. Um, and if you talk to colleagues from our medical school, you will see their deep engagement um, in uh, medical uh, interventions in Africa. We also, last year, set up uh, an Institute of Global Innovation, again, to harness the interdisciplinary capability of our university to enable us to work in partnership um, to confront the global challenges uh, that we all face. Cooperation and collaboration with African colleagues and institutions is just, uh, therefore, at the heart uh, of our strategic engagement with the wider world. Through the University Test 21 network, which facilitates global educational innovation, student exchange and research engagement, which I currently chair, Birmingham is developing close links with the University of Johannesburg. It's fascinating how South African debates about the nature of higher education, the curriculum and knowledge production resonate internationally including here in the UK, and it's that kind of joint learning uh, that uh, enables us to enrich, mutually enrich, the curriculum and experiences of our students. So engaging with African colleagues and institutions as partners, UK researchers have a great deal to learn. To learn. Africa offers a unique vantage point from which to question existing theories and discourses and together to push the boundaries of knowledge. I understand that Professor Grace uh, Muzilala uh, will explore some of these questions in more detail in her keynote address, which will follow in a few moments and because of another engagement I'm very sorry uh, to have to miss. They undoubtedly will be a key threat to uh, the debates that you have in the conference in the coming days. So just before I close, let me also just take a moment to thank and pay tribute to the organisers. I am told that since the last uh, uh, AA, ASA UK conference was held in Birmingham in 2002, it's grown, grown dramatically, uh, with this year over 800 participants having registered. I think we can all appreciate the enormous amount of time and effort, both from academic colleagues and from professional service colleagues which have gone in to organising and to preparing for this conference. So our thanks should go to many, but I'd particularly like to recognise Elisa uh, Tollinger, uh, who... <laughs> who is the uh, conference administrator. And of course, I would also want to uh, recognise uh, Insa Nolte, uh, for whom this marks the end of a distinguished term uh, as President of uh, ASA UK. Both Insa and Lisa have given a huge amount of time uh, to this conference, and uh, I know that um, they are enormously looking forward to uh, what is going to unfold uh, over the next two days. So in thanking them and in thanking you all again for coming uh, to this conference uh, in Birmingham, uh, it only remains uh, for me uh, to wish you a very productive uh, and a very convivial uh, conference. Thank you very much.